Hey, welcome to Crafty Music Tips. So you've got yourself a song, you've arranged it, you've recorded it. This is the part four in this video series. We're going to be talking about the post-production stages. Okay, so the post-production stages to me, in layman's terms, it would be that you're getting your recording ready to present to people. Present them. And there's three main parts of the post-production stage, which is editing, mixing, and mastering. Now, like anything in life, it's really easy to spend longer than necessary on this part of the process. So you have to plan. Can I stress that enough? Plan. So if you're not too sure what to plan, here's a quick helpful guide of a bunch of things that you'll encounter in the post-production. Now, if you're not really sure what to plan for in the editing stage, here's a few things that I do. I sort my tracks into categories. I colorize these categories. I cut out the excess noisy nothings. More about what that is later. I choose my best takes and if there's any mistakes, I fix them. Fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. Now there's a number of steps to take in the mix stage. So the first one for me is doing a static mix. Basically all of that is is just getting your volumes to be at the right volume where you can kind of hear everything. The next thing is you put some plugins on the master fader just to help the overall sound. Then you go through individually, but track by track, figure out what needs compression and then EQ and then effects. And then once you've done all of that, then you listen to a reference. Basically what it is, it's you're listening to a recording that you really like the sound of that's sort of similar to your recording with similar instruments and similar tones and so forth. And then you're listening like, well, how loud is their vocal compared to their drums or their guitar or their synth or whatever. And then once you've compared your mix to them, then you print out your mix and you reference your mix on a bunch of different speakers. Now, a really important step in the mix stage is you ask people for constructive feedback. Why would you do that? Well, have you ever put something out there to the world and then somebody says, hey, did you hear that mistake? <laughs> it's like, no, somebody could have told you that before. You could have fixed it. So what's that? That's a nipple. Right. <laughs> oh. Now, the last stage of the audio post-production process is mastering. I'm not gonna go too far into that in this video, but basically it's just the gloss. What do I mean by gloss? Well, you have a mix and it sounds pretty good. Mastering just helps give it a bit more sparkle, a little bit more punch, a little bit more, yeah. Now I went through all of that stuff really quick on purpose, just so that you have a really clear list of stuff that you need to go through. Now I'm gonna show you how I did those things with a song that I recently recorded and produced. Let's have a quick listen. Don't know what you was like. I don't care if you're naughty or nice, or if you hear the same words twice. I hope that you have a very legendary Christmas. Now, just a quick side note: I recorded and mixed everything in Logic Pro X. Okay, here we go. So in my edit stage, as you can see here, I've got a bunch of categories and they're colored. So the yellows is some drums. And then we have blue bass. And then we have a green for guitar. Now I made my trumpets orange. So yeah, sorting through all of the different random instruments that I recorded, putting them in neat categories where I could see them really clearly, geez, it made it a much easier process. All right, so next on my list was cutting out the excess noisy nothings. All right, so what does that mean, cutting out the excess noisy nothings? So as you can see here, there's no bass. Here, what, why is that?
It's because there's some silence. It's it's a spot where the bass stops playing. Now, if I hadn't cut out that part of the track there, well, then there'd potentially be like a little bit of amp hum. So I went through every single track and got rid of all of the excess noisy nothings. Okay, so if we see this one vocal track here, it just looks like one track, like I just sang it that way. But I'm actually not a perfect, always get it right person, believe it or not. <laughs> Who would have thought? I'm a human. And so uh, here's a bunch of different takes of my singing, and I just picked the best ones. I can't believe that it's nearly the time for a holiday. So it's interesting. So most of take four there was the best, but the word can't. I can't believe what well, wasn't good enough. I wonder why. Let's have a listen. I can't believe that. Ah, uh, it wasn't the right note. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. I can't believe that it's nearly. That's better. So after I chose all my best takes, it was time to fix any mistakes that there were. Now, I don't have any mistakes to show you here because if there were any, I fixed them. <laughs> But uh, what that could be is it could be that, like, if there's another part of a song that you've played or sang better, you could potentially just do a little quick copy and paste. Now, a lot of people don't like doing that because it's not real and human. But, hey, if you're in a rush, sometimes it's like, come on, let's just get it done. All right, so I've got everything edited. Yes. Now it's time to mix. The first part of the mixing stage is the static mix. Let's have a look at the mix screen. So yeah, Logic has two different types of screens. The edit screen, which we were looking at a bunch of the, the track waveforms before, but this is looking at all of the faders as if it was a mixing desk. The time for a holiday It's driving you crazy Knowing that you could have gone to Jamaica so for instance, so I've got the, all of the drums going through a subgroup here. Now, at the very start of the mixing process, you just got to get your levels right. Now, so if the drums were too loud, well then I can just turn them down. I don't know what you was like. I don't care if you're naughty or nice. See, I've just chucked it down 10 dB there. That's not really loud enough. You can't hear them enough. Or if you hear the same. Everything else is too loud. So I can make the drums too loud. So yeah, just the first stages, just get all of the volumes at a pretty close point where you can sort of hear everything clearly. So then the next point is to go along and find the master fader, which is here in Logic. And without these two plugins, the song sounds like this. Now, what I did here is I just did a very small little bit of EQing and I did some subtractive EQing. To my ears, it sounded like that in these spots, 132, 235 and 2800, sounded like it was just a little bit too much in those areas. So I just pulled them out. This is what it sounds like with it. And then with that. a very subtle difference but it's a lot easier to be able to manage unwanted frequencies by just taking them out of the master in a small amount and then you have less work to do on each of the channels individual channels so the next plugin that i had was a tape emulation plugin which is uh, the kramer tape one and so i just chose a mastering preset this is what it sounds like without it Is what it sounds like with it. You. Yeah, you, you, and you. So whether or not you can hear the difference, it is subtle, but all of these little subtle things will all add together in the end to make a sweet result. All right, so next on my list is to add some compression. Now, if you've never heard of that, what it is is just to compress the sound compress the volume levels, I guess, basically. And so what that means is the highest volume levels just get brought down a bit and the lowest volume levels get brought up a little bit, which gives a more of a consistent volume 
overall. Now you can do this on the master fader, you can do this on individual channels. So I'll just show an example here. This is the acoustic guitar, and this is a compressor that is on this channel. There we go, so I've just bypassed it. This is what it sounds like without it. Sounds pretty good. And then if I turn it on, it sounds like this. Now, it may be hard to hear a difference there, but just to me, just, just very subtly, it sounds like it's just a little bit more contained. Now, as you can see, this is the amount of gain reduction that's happening. Depends on how loud the acoustic was being strummed. So the amount of gain reduction that's occurring here is a complete result of how much threshold we have. So I can compress it more. Let's have a listen. So that's a huge amount of compression there because the amount of gain that's being reduced is like around about like 10 dB. So if I turn the threshold up, it means a lot less will be being compressed. None. And so it's just a matter of finding the right balance so that you're just compressing a little bit because, look, you might want a really squashed sound, but squashing it too much makes it feel and sound unnatural. So you just got to, I guess it's just like taking the edge off, really. All right, so next on this mix list was to EQ. Now, EQ stands for equalization. And what that means is adjusting frequencies to either make something sound clearer or warmer, taking the edge off of the, the sparkle or adding sparkle, you know, that type of thing. And so here's my example in this song. So I EQ'd the banjo quite a bit, as you can see here. So, uh, so I guess it was sounding a little bit dull to my ears. This is without EQ. And so I like this visual type of EQ plugin. This just comes with logic. And so if we listen to that same thing again with the EQ enabled, it sounds like this. So without. Sounds fine as it is, but in context, the reason why I would have added a bit more just clarity there is just so that it just cut through the mix a bit more. Now, you don't necessarily need to EQ on every single channel or compress, but the more that you do, the just better professional it will potentially sound, as long as you don't go overboard in the wrong way. All right, next on the list is going through each channel and figuring out which ones need effects. So effects could be echo or reverb type thing. I've got a trumpet channel here, which doesn't have any reverb on it. So what I ended up doing is adding this amount of reverb to it. Yeah, so obviously there's a bit more decay time there, which means that it lasts longer. It's like you're in a cave. Now, it depends on what sort of sound you're after and not exactly the same amount of reverb decay time will work on every single channel. So I guess it's a matter of how dry or wet do you want your mix to be with the amount of reverb and the amount of other effects as well. Now for copyright reasons, I won't play the song that I was referencing, but the song Still Haven't Met You Yet by Michael Buble was one that I was going back and forth. And sometimes, you know, it's good to have uh, two or three different references. That way it just gives you a perspective. You might be like, oh, the guitars are louder in this one. Oh, but the drums are louder in that one. And you, it's, it's just a balancing act. And so the types of speakers that I was listening to is I was listening in headphones. I was listening through my studio speakers. I was listening in my car. I was just listening straight out of my phone. And it's important to listen to at least a few different types of speakers because each of them will sound different. And so, yeah, it's a weird juggling act. You know, if you're listening on your phone and all you can hear is vocals, you might think, all right, well, I better turn them down a bit. But then you listen to it in your car and it's like, oh, I can't hear the vocals very clearly at all. So it's just a juggling act trying to figure out what is your optimum mix. 
And so last time my mix list is asking others for constructive feedback. So I did that. Well, there was one spot where I had guitars too loud and someone told me like, oh, the guitars, you know, too loud. So I just tweaked accordingly to make sure that I guess everybody was happy. Right, so we've been through my editing stages and mixing stages, and the last thing, it's called mastering, and it's, like I said before, it's where the gloss gets put on. So if you've never heard of mastering before, I guess it's kind of like, you know, have you ever seen a photo that's been unedited before? So mastering's kind of like putting the gloss, photoshopping, that type of thing. Just the, the last stages. So your edit and your mix is kind of putting gloss on it as well, but the mastering is just the final gloss. It's like the icing on the cake, I guess. So here we go. Have a listen. This is just the mix, unmastered, of the verse. Can you believe that it's nearly the end of the calendar? And here's the mastered version. Can you believe that it's nearly the end of the calendar? So it's definitely louder, but it also just has that gloss. Now, another thing that I did in the mastering stage, as you can see here, I put markers on where the chorus was. And so what I did is I just increased the chorus by a dB. Just what that does is it just gives the chorus a bit of a boost, it makes it feel more like, hey, this is the main catchy part of the song. All right, so there we go, the process of post-production with an audio recording. Let me know in the comments below, what did you learn? Let's just do a quick recap. We have to plan. It's really important that we plan. Uh, we have an edit stage, a mixing stage. Make sure that we reference. We have a mastering stage. We also need to ask for feedback. Every time we say goodbye, I die a little. So I hope that was helpful for you. I've got one more little helpful thing that I'm going to give to you before we finish up here. This is an ebook download. It's for free. It's called Actually, How Good Are You? Basically, wherever you're at in your musical journey, we go through in the ebook how to be able to figure out exactly where you are on that journey and where it is that you want to go and how you can get there. I give you all of the steps to be able to figure out it all yourself, no matter what age you are or what experience you have or don't have. So if that's something that could be helpful for you, I'll leave a link below. Give it a quick download and go through it. It'll be very helpful. I guarantee it pinky swear. If this video isn't enough for you, you can follow Crafty Music Tips on a bunch of different socials platforms. This is part four post-production. We're all finished with that. Part five will be the last in this video series where we go through how to make your video. So I'll see you in that video. My name's Crafty. It's been a pleasure hanging out. I'll see you really soon. Take care. Keep rocking.